So I'm waiting for the stories to begin. Which team will score first, which country will win? As women and men and kids around the globe get ready for the stories of these games to unfold. Now, towns full of posters, flags stuck in cars, late licenses granted, football shirts selling fast, betting shops open, coins clatter, names passed, necks wrapped in teams, scarves, arms wrapped in song, pubs will be rammed, TVs worldwide switched on, stomachs wait sick, all programmes banned in our flat, but this, and I'm waiting for all of it. A football lover since I was a kid. Chalk drawn playground pitch, school jumpers for posts. At 20 years old, I reach 50 keepy uppies, and when I'm touring on my own, I always take a football with me. Because despite the money management and football player millionaires, it's still a game that anyone can play with anybody, anywhere. A magnet for new friends. And although my dad pretends in his hearty Glasgow laugh that he's already bought his new Uruguayan scarf so he can cause a bit of fuss as I stand screaming for England. I think the story of these games is much more than who will win them. So now I'm waiting for Brazil versus Croatia, for the silence and the screams as us fans become impatient from the kickoff through the playtime to the nerve-wracked final minutes, eyes glued to their feet as these football ballerinas batter balls like magicians. I'll be screaming at the screen at the referee's decisions, the setups, the penalties, the missed offside positions, chatting at half time as the stories keep unfolding, whose boots will come out golden, whose strike will hit the post, will Rio or Salvador be the better host, which city will build up its stadiums quickest, will all of these stadiums even get finished, what will happen to the stadiums when everyone's gone? Will the protests go on? Will Brazilians continue to march through the streets? Will poor Brazilian boys be stopped, searched and beat as more favelas policed? Will evictions go up? Will the local food vendors be shoved out these games so that money goes straight to the global food chains or will sponsors show love? Will shops realise 90 quid for a shirt is too much? Will Brazil's bank balance really go up? Will funds trickle down into local solutions or will the games flame more conflict and force prostitution? Will the street kids we see kicking balls through the dirt, barefoot in the streets of Brazil's poorer pitches, really get any funds or new sporting facilities when the game's up? Because these games mean so much. So I'm waiting to see which way we step up, if the ending's corrupt or if the skill and the love will snatch back the pen. I'll be watching with friends. The story has started, but how will it end?